slips out of a few tackles, and Peter Hoggle out for the races. I'll do it up for the team. And sheds the first defender, sheds the second defender. Busts it open. Jack Smith down the right sideline and into the end zone. Remember, remember the beginning of September. Welcome to Varsity Sports Live, the only one hour high school football show in the country. South Dakota, Ooh. North Dakota. Well, I should say region. I don't know about country. I think it's I the could, country. I could, say, I could say region, at least with full confidence. I love it. In the region. We're going big here. We got some big highlights to show you. David Brown, Jay Standera, Jody Norris will join us from Fargo. But uh, we're probably going to be saying the same thing week after week. But, man, we had some amazing games tonight. <laughs> we did. We had some low-scoring games, uh, some big surprises, at least rankings-wise. And uh, I think we found out a few contenders. And then 11 AAA, as usual, Nothing but surprises and close games. Well, speaking of 11 AAA, let's go right to the scoreboard here with 11 AAA. Tomorrow, live right here on Midco Sports, you will see the number one team in AAA, the Sioux Falls Lincoln Patriots, taking on Rapid City Central in the Rushmore Bowl. But I'm going to already dub the number two team the Cardiac Cavs this year. Second straight week, Sioux Falls Jefferson wins in overtime 24 17 over Sioux Falls Washington. They were down 17 nothing in the fourth quarter, 24 unanswered. We're going to have highlights, but another amazing game for Jefferson. Yeah, that was a lot of fun to watch. And you're right, a much different team than last year that blew through the schedule. This year, two overtime games, but 2 0. Cardiac Cavs 2 0 on the season. More in AAA. O'Gorman. Is that a basketball score? That is that is not a basketball score. It is not a nine-man basketball score. 77 to 20, O'Gorman over Sioux Falls Roosevelt. And uh, we'll have an interesting stat on this game coming up a little bit later. And then tomorrow evening, Harrisburg, Brandon Valley, one of those teams is going to be 0-2, Jandy. Yeah, yeah. look at it that way. One of those teams is going to be 0-2. It's going to be a great game, though. Like, literally, this is one of those games that I really look forward to all season long. And moving on down the scoreboard, another Rushmore Bowl game, which will happen tomorrow, will be Douglas and Rapid City Stevens. Again, you will see that game right here on Midco Sports. Let's moving go. to Double A, Pier all over Brookings, 49 nothing, second straight shutout for the Govs to start the season. And they got scoring from all over the field. We had a camera out there, so we'll bring you some highlights of those. More Double A scores from South Dakota T area over Aberdeen Central, 28 to seven. They only led by seven at halftime, but T. Seem to be picking things back up after their close call against Huron last week. Yankton in a game with Spearfish 42-27. You and I were just talking before the show. Spearfish, even with the loss, might be a little bit better than people think. Yeah, I think Spearfish has definitely improved. And this year, uh, they really played well with Yankton all the way into the second half. So that score is a little misleading. Spearfish pushed Yankton for sure. Speaking of surprise teams in 11 AA, well, surprises to most, but not to you, Jason Andair. Watertown starts the season 2 0. Big road win against a Huron team that challenged T. Yeah, good for Watertown to come out on the road, show what they can do against what looks like a pretty quality team in 11 AA right now in Huron. And another win for them. They get some big tests here in the next couple weeks, though. Sturgis Brown, 38 to 6 over Mitchell. They led that game 24 0 at halftime. In 11A, Del Rapids all over Belfouche, 39 to 13. A game you were at at Sioux Falls Christian, 14 6. West Central, big matchup there. Yeah, and that was 3 0 at halftime. That was really close. Back to that Del Rapids game, Jack Henry, we talked about how much he hasn't had to pass. He was 3 for 3 in this game. So on the season, now 10 of 13. That's pretty efficient. Pretty efficient, only having to throw 13 passes through the first two games. Jack Henry and the defending champion, Del Rapids Quarriers. In 11B, winner 46 to 14 over Webster. As we get a look at that scoreboard, there we go. 46 14 over Webster area. And then another great top five matchup, Sioux Valley 20 to 11 over Elk Point Jefferson, the defending state champions. You thought Sioux Valley was a sleeper heading into the season. Yeah, this is a team with some firepower uh, for them only to have 20 points though says something about Elk Point Jefferson's defense. Uh, I can't wait to see highlights of this one coming up soon. Absolutely. Remember that Elk Point Jefferson defense had something like five straight shutouts to start the season last year. Rapid City Christian St. Thomas Moore kind of wow. a slugfest seven nothing. The Cavs defeat the comments. We liked Rapid City Christian coming in. They'll probably bounce back from that. Then the big one, the battle of number ones and nine man nine double A Parkston all over nine A Wolsey Weston 54 nothing. That's statement time for Parkston. They probably heard us talking about how we voted for Hamlin and not for <laughs> Parkston and came out with some power and Wolsey Wessington, um, you know, coming off of last week's big win. You wonder if they maybe just didn't have quite the same 
hype and readiness that they had going into week one. 54 0 in the final there. Afternoon game down in Freeman, 52 18. The Phoenix over the Pirates. We'll have highlights of that when you were down there. Falkton area, the new number one in 9B, takes care of business against Potter County, 52 8. That one started out slow, and Falkton really poured it on in the second half. So 9B is definitely wide open this year, but so far, Falkton area, they look the most legit out of anyone. And then DeSmet 32 to 14 over Del Rapids at St. Mary's so the number two team in 9B also taking care of business against Del Rapids St. Mary's. So those are your scores of importance in South Dakota. But as you said, we talked about it on Football Insiders this week in case you missed it. But 11 AAA this year is just going to be topsy turvy all season long. It yeah, you can tell that already, and uh, the one team that can for sure tell that is the Jefferson Cavaliers. Yes, again, we can start the hashtag, the Cardiac Cavs. Let's get to the highlights. Sioux Falls Jefferson and Sioux Falls Washington. In the first, Jefferson with the ball, Ethan Swenson. Intercepted by Washington's Nathan Day. The Warriors forced five Jefferson turnovers, Jandy. And three interceptions in that first half. Ethan Swenson, the junior quarterback, wasn't looking confident, but look at this. The play after the confident quarterback, Tommy Hoffman. To Jace Woods, 97 yards to give the Warriors a 7-0 lead. What a statement from the Warriors early. Jefferson with the ball back, but Swenson, again, he's picked off. This time it's Dante Smith, and he's taking it to the house. Yeah, he's going to look back at that. He stared him down, but a great play by Dante Smith. I think he had two picks in that game, if I remember right. He did. 14-0 Washington at halftime. Third quarter, Swenson, a deep pass to Jordan Detter. This is actually when it's 17-0 in the fourth quarter because Washington added a field goal. So it's 17-0 Warriors in the fourth. Jefferson mounting the comeback. Detter with the score. Then, down 17-10. This is Dawson Sexer on fourth and goal. Ties the game at 17. That looks a lot like last week. It does. So we go to overtime. In OT, Jefferson, they take the ball at offense first. Ethan Swenson fakes everyone out, runs to the left pylon, 24-17. First lead of the game for Jefferson. Washington has to score to keep the game alive. Hoffman, Mason Wilson threw his hands, probably didn't have enough to get to the end zone anyway. And how about Sioux Falls Jefferson? Down 17 in the fourth quarter, comes back and defeats Washington. Well, this is a testament to, you know, getting down but not getting down on yourselves. They threw three interceptions that first half. They lost Evan Haug, their leading receiver from last year, didn't play in the second half of this game, and yet found a way to put 24 consecutive points back up on, a, on an improved Washington Warrior team. Let's talk about that for a second. These Washington Warriors don't have a huge senior class. They don't have a lot of returning starters. I mean, just quite frankly, not much was expected from them, and they've played two good weeks in a row. They have played two good weeks in a row. I know they won't take any moral victories out of this, but it will be a learning experience for Washington. But again, they'll be a team now to keep an eye on. They open some eyes despite the loss. But again, Jefferson, after winning every game last year by at least 17 points, two straight in overtime to start the 2023 season. The early game at Howard Wood Field featured number three O'Gorman taking on Sioux Falls Roosevelt. Jamie, I asked this last year, why do we show the opening kickoff a game? It's either <laughs> when something good or bad happens. Uh, yeah, it's it's good for O'Gorman and Jace DC, 79 yards. Yeah, this is uh, this is a great way to start the game for O'Gorman. And there's a lot of scoring in this ball game. It was actually a little bit closer in this first half than the score showed, but Ryland Satter catches this one out in the flats, turns it upfield, and again, Roosevelt is playing without several players who are serving that two game suspension. 14 nothing O'Gorman on that Saturday touchdown. Next night's possession play action. Look at that stiff arm by Sullivan Schlimgen. That guy's a stud. He does the rest 51 yards to the house. It's 21 to nothing. By the way, we are still in the first quarter. One play after a Roosevelt turnover. Cruz all day to Henry Theobald 33 yards. 28 nothing nights after one, but as you said, a bit closer. Roosevelt would chip away at the lead. This three yard run is the second straight rushing touchdown for Jackson Gravengood. Cuts at the 28 13, but that's as close as the Rough Riders get. Second quarter, OG turns to the running game. Look at the spin by Maverick Jones. O'Gorman up 41 13 at halftime. And then check out this final 77 20. Here's the amazing thing. The Knights got a safety on the last play of the game, and with that 77 is the most points in a single game in O'Gorman history. 
beating the 76. They scored against Sioux Falls Lincoln in 2018. So literally that safety gave them the record on the last play of the game. I'm pretty sure they weren't going for that, no. but it made it pretty special. And uh, how about the way they spread out those touchdowns? Those first five touchdowns to Jones, to Theobald, to Satter, Satter Schlimgen, Schlimgen the, the kick return. The, everything was clicking for these Knights and uh, a solid, solid win as they go 2-0 and now. And they will face T area next week at home while Sioux Falls Roosevelt will face an improved Washington squad. Out in 11 at double A, Brookings and Pier Bobcats trying to bounce back from that shutout loss against Watertown. Pier looking to continue its shutout streak that they had against Aberdeen Central. Brookings just stung by turnovers in the first half. Spencer Easland with the pick here for the Governors. And it's the Pier defense kind of making waves early, Jandy. Yeah, this has been a lot of fun to see them take the leadership. Easland with two picks, and there's Another combination we're going to see plenty of this year. Jet Zabel grabbing one. Kate Geyser to Jet Zabel. 7 at nothing. Pierre gets it right back. Trey Lewis. Good tough run. He's going to take it down to just around Lewis? the one yard line. Linebacker last year doing some running back, kicking or returning punts for touchdowns. Uh, I didn't mean to talk over that. I think it was Mosier touchdown. Yes, there. Mosier gets the glory of the touchdown, even though Lewis did all the hard yardage. But this time again, eh, there we go. Well, you see, everyone gets a little piece of the action there. That's Mosier again, 21-0. Rule the touchdown. Brookings trying to stay in this game. They're moving it on Ooh. third down. Great catch by Bergen Tetzloff, but turn around, second quarter. Pass is going to be batted in the air and intercepted again by Spencer Easland, his second pick of the game. Gov's going to roll right down the field. And uh, we talked about this little combination between Kay Kaiser and Jet Zabel. Yeah, it, it's going to happen again here. Eight, ten catches last week for a couple touchdowns, a couple more, what, three touchdowns for Jet Zabel in this game. He's off to a very good start, and Kate Kaiser, too, also off to a great start. And that would be pretty much it as far as scoring is concerned. They would add a punt return. They would add an interception return later in the game. It was 49-0 at halftime, and that would end up being your final score, 49-0 here over Brookings. Yeah, there's Trey Lewis taking that that. Uh, big return back, so what a day for him. But 49-0, uh, yes, this was kind of a rivalry over the past two years. Uh, not so much of a rivalry here, but let's hear from one of the leaders on defense, Spencer Eisland, and leaders on offense, Kate Kaiser. We took some time this week, figured out who blocks who, really get that down and just keep working, I guess. And just line really did everything. Yeah, there's a lot of people that did really well tonight. And too many to name, honestly. Jet, Trey, there's just a lot of guys. Cade. Yeah, tonight was just taking care of business and focusing on us. Um, I heard a quote earlier this week, and it said, it's easier to work together than to work alone. And that was from the Tennessee Volunteers uh, football program. And that's just what a big, big uh, focus of tonight was. Just staying together, playing up at our level and not dropping down. And just pushing the ball, having a lot of fun and working together. And I think that's what we did really well tonight. And we took care of business. And I'm really happy with the fellas. All around good football. What, one of the questions I asked Steve Steele is, what can we expect from Cade Kaiser? Is he a good leader? And, and Steele said, yeah, this guy is a great leader. And I've heard him talk after uh, both weeks now in the post game on the radio and then our post game. And you can tell this guy is buttoned up, ready to go. He's got his team ready and everybody's following him. And this is a really bad news for the rest of 11 AA this year. Yeah, a combined 81 nothing peer through the first two weeks with victories over Aberdeen Central and Brookings, who are a couple of top five teams in 11 AA coming into the season. Yeah. But Pierre looking every bit the six time state champions, certainly reloading at key positions and doing well on both offense and defense for the governors out in the capital city. More highlights coming up. T and Aberdeen Central. Midway through the second quarter, Aberdeen on its own two. We saw a 97 yard play. How about a 98 yard play? Cooper Eisenbees, extra point good. That ties the game at seven. Got some long touchdowns in this region here, Jandy. Yeah, this is uh, one explosive play. They did not have a ton of explosive plays in this game, but they were able to grind it out on the running play. And you see it once again. Tyler Reed for a few yards that leads to this next play from the 15 touchdown Dawson Imers finding him in the back right corner of the end zone 14 to 7 T 
key area. 28 to 7 is your final. The Titans over the Golden Eagles. And Aberdeen was not able to establish any kind of regularity on offense. They had that one big play to Eisenbaez. But Lamar, 5 of 14. As a team, they ran for negative 30 yards. The T area Titans defense got their trademark. They stepped up and shut down the Golden Eagles to hopefully keep them at number two. Again, T kind of struggling a little bit to start the season, found a little bit of mojo in that second half to take this one 28 to seven. Top three matchup in 11A, West Central visiting Sioux Falls Christian. Bit of a defensive battle in the first half. You were out at Bob Young Field, but uh, Braden Whitty with a big run here. This guy was the workhorse. This is all Sioux Falls Christian did to start the game was run the ball and Whitty did a huge job of that but got him into the red zone just enough for a 38 what, 39 yard field goal. Uh, but that was all the scoring in the first half. Yeah, three nothing Chargers at the break. Moving into the third quarter now, West Central, Cade Nelson. Check out this tip drill by Crew Hire. That's, that's the future USD lineman, defensive lineman, maybe tight end. Uh, but he got him into scoring position and the first touchdown of the game, Caden Alveson on the keeper. Trojans up six to three after the two pointer is no good. Fourth quarter now, Chargers, they had a lot of Opportunities inside the five, but they have to take the points. Another field goal coming up here by Doctor, and we are tied at six, about 10 minutes to go. And that kick was into the wind. That was not an easy kick, but it, they did. They tied it up, and this is the biggest play of the game right here as West Central finally got one to break through. Jesse Joe's running it in for the score. Conversion good this time. Trojans up 14 6. Final chance for the Chargers. Fourth and eight with under a minute to go. It is incomplete. And West Central will escape with a hard fought 14 to 6 victory. Yeah, that was a fun game. And you're right, defense played a huge role in this game for both of these teams. But West Central with a little bit more defense. And after the game, I caught up with Crew Hire, one of their leaders on defense. We struggled, obviously, throughout the game. But obviously, we come back. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't even know what to say. It was a hard fought game. Hard Jesse Yo, shout out to him. He had a great run. That was awesome. That's what turned the game for us. It was awesome. It's our defense is the heart and soul of our team. It's awesome. Chet Sarda, he's a dog at middle linebacker. We just got so many, so much potential on this defense and young guys. And you heard it from him himself. The defense obviously making the big difference in this game. They got that one big offensive play in the fourth quarter. And West Central, they may have to win some ugly games like this. Yeah, I'll tell you what, uh, their quarterback, Caden Alveson, the junior, just getting his feet under him. They're not throwing the ball a ton. They're going to run it. Sioux Falls Christian, the same thing. Uh, they're out a few players, and they felt more comfortable running. I think they started the game with 10 straight runs. And in the second half, they went back to the run. Um, they're going to have to find a way to make some plays in the passing game. Both of these two teams, I think, if they're going to advance deep into the playoffs. But very solid defensive performances on both sides of the ball. And a tough start just for Sioux Falls Christian. A couple of top five matchups. They're 0-2, but we know the Chargers are going to be a factor down the stretch. Similar to last year, though, and uh, they bounced back quite well. So they know the formula, at least. West Central with a 14-6 victory over uh, Sioux Falls Christian. Sioux Valley and Elk Point Jefferson. This is a top three matchup in 11B, and it was a bit of a struggle in that first half for both sides. Elk Point Jefferson had a bit of a lead, but uh, Bodie Schiller was doing everything for Sioux Valley. Yeah, Bodie Schiller is one of these freak athletes, and they couldn't wait to unleash him at quarterback this year, and he's uh, showing off why. He is such an important part of this offense. Sioux Valley led this one 7-3 at halftime. Elk Point Jefferson, they tried to make a little bit of a comeback. Luke Schmidt is going to score for Elk Point Jefferson coming up here. And the Huskies doing what champions do. And it's a tough road environment down in Volga, South Dakota, playing against Sioux Valley. Nice long run here, staying in bounds, getting the score. But it would be Sioux Valley eventually taking care of business. Again, Elk Point Jefferson doing its best on the road, but that defense stood strong for the Cossacks. And Schiller once again just doing it all for Sioux Valley. Yeah, and Bowden Schiller played a little bit of running back last year. He's been a receiver before. And they didn't really announce to anybody that he was going to be the starting quarterback this year until the first game of the year. And boy, he has done a great job giving them a couple of different threats. Donovan Rose, another guy who gives them a little different flavor running the ball. But a big day for both of Brock Christian, Christopherson, who got a rushing touchdown, and Bowden Schiller, who had a big night for the Cossacks. And we caught up with the Cossacks after the game. 
Yeah, it was a great job by the line. I mean, all night, those guys were battling up front. Obviously, they never get enough credit, but if you watch film, those, those guys are dogs. They're just battling out there. And you can see that the magic or whatever you want to call it for Sioux Valley is working so far this year. The Cossacks are 3-0. And again, when we were talking with Dan Hughes before the season, we figured that this team might make a difference in 11B where we saw a first-time champion last year in Elk Point Jefferson. Don't appoint winner just yet. Sioux Valley can certainly make a run. Yeah, there's definitely not much of a gap there between these top teams, and they want to prove they belong. And they've had good teams before, but those years that Sioux Valley has had really good teams, you know, Winner or Bridgewater Emory Ethan has been that much better. This year, I think the field is all really mixed up, and these Cossacks, if they can continue to do what they have done with Donovan Rose and Bowden Schiller, they're going to be really tough to beat. Yeah, a very good victory tonight for Sioux Valley, 20-11 over Elk Point Jefferson. More highlights, Rapid City Christian and St. Thomas Moore. You saw the score a little bit earlier, kind of a bit of a slugfest. Start of the second quarter, Rapid City Christian trying to punt the ball away, but the high snap and they're taken down inside their own red zone. And then a couple plays later, St. Thomas Moore would take advantage. I formation, Chase Donnelly into the end zone. St. Thomas Moore is up 7-0. Late in the second quarter, Rapid City Christian is on the move. Simon Kiefer. To Wes Schlebach here eventually over the middle. Some nice moves by Kiefer there in the backfield. There you go. Eventually finds him. Cuts back toward the middle. And they're going to get inside. But unfortunately, Spencer Johansson forces the fumble at the five-yard line. And St. Thomas Moore takes it over. That was as close as the Comets would get in a 7-0 slugfest, as I mentioned. Rapid City Christian is improved. And St. Thomas Moore trying to bounce back from their loss last week did some nice things on defense and just enough on offense. This was a potential moment where you would swing the pendulum from St. Thomas Moore, who's been one of the best teams out in Rapid City, especially in, in 11B over the past decade or so, that the pendulum started to swing toward Rapid City Christian, but St. Thomas Moore said not so fast, and they played a great defensive game against a very talented quarterback and held the Comets scoreless. Huge defensive performance by the Cavs tonight. 7-0 St. Thomas Moore over Rapid City Christian. A couple of number ones. We mentioned squaring off in nine man. Nine double A's top team Parkston. Nine A's top team Woolsey Westenden. First quarter Warbirds driving. It's a QB keeper. Pop loose. Coulter Kramer picks it up for Parkston. And he is gone. 71 yard fumble recovery for a score. Yeah, this is uh, there's a lot of seniors on this Parkston team and they made it to the dome with a huge junior class. These guys are cashing in this year, and they look so much better than the opposition on this night. Kramer did it on defense. There he does it on offense. 14-0 Parkson still in the first. Guess who? This Kramer does not need his intern Darren. Kramerica Industries in full force. His third touchdown of the first quarter. 84 yards on that run. Parkson in an absolute route. 54 to nothing over Woolsey Westington is your final. It's a solid team effort for the Parks and Trojans too. There are a lot of different guys they can give it to. Kramer just happened to be the recipient tonight. There you see Parks and moves to three no Woolsey Westington falls two two and one. It was a hot one in the middle of the afternoon. Avon at Freeman Marion Freeman Academy. After the Phoenix stopped Avon on fourth and goal, Riley Shedder rips off this 84 yard touchdown run to put the Phoenix up 6 0. Huge momentum shift right away early in the game, and the Phoenix did not need much time to get back down the field and do it again. Shedder going up top. Evan Scharberg coming on down. Home team now up 12 0. He throws a really nice ball, and you're going to see it right here on this throw in stride to Rocky Ammon. Yeah, Rocky Ammon, one of the few seniors on this team. I think just five seniors on this Phoenix team, but he was a huge part of their success today. But they're spreading it around. Look at the defense making a huge play on the stripped fumble in the end zone for another defensive touchdown. Luke Peters with the fumble recovery and the score. Pirates trying to salvage the ship. Isaiah Meyer, big junior, gets his second touchdown of the first half. That cuts it to 24-12. But just before halftime, the Phoenix would extend the lead. And once again, it is Mr. Riley Shedder to Mr. Evan Sharberg for another score. And another nice pass right there. They have got one of the best passing attacks in 9AA. I don't know if they have the depth or the, or the defense to make a run in 9AA when it comes to playoff time, but they're going to be one of the most fun teams to watch this year, that is for sure. The Phoenix moved to 3 0. The Pirates fall to 2 1. Again, Freeman, Marion, Freeman Academy in 9AA. Avon 
in 9B. Lots of fun action in South Dakota, but when we come back, we move up north to North Dakota. Highlights with our man Jody Norstead. Plenty of action going on in Fargo and otherwise. We're back on Varsity Sports Live after this. Varsity Sports Live, presented by Farmers Union Insurance. Simply different. Varsity Sports Live, presented by South Dakota State University. Build a better future with South Dakota State University. Welcome back to Varsity Sports Live. David Brown, Jason Andera. We talked about South Dakota. Let's get a look at our North Dakota scoreboard right here. And Fargo Shanley was all over West Fargo, 57 to 14. Great top five matchup. West Fargo Cheyenne, 21 14 over Fargo Davies. Mandan gets a bounce back as they upset Bismarck Century by three. Minot with a shutout over Bismarck Legacy, 49 to nothing. Moving right along, Bismarck over Bismarck St. Mary's, 49 to seven. Dickinson in a final on Thursday defeated Williston, 26 to six. In double A, Grand Forks Red River, 23 to 12 over Wapton. Wapton led that game at halftime, by the way. Fargo South shuts out Grand Forks Central, 34 to nothing. Tip of the cap to West Fargo Horace, first win in school history, 27-26 over Devils Lake. Jamestown all over Turtle Mountain, they quadruple them, 48-12. Moving right along, Velva maintains number one, they top Deluxe Burlington, 40-16. Kindred all over Hillsborough Central Valley, 44-13. Botno losing to Langdon area, Edmore Munich, 34-6. Dickinson Trinity, 42-8 over Hazen. South Border, 37 to 14 over Grant County Flasher. Linton HMB over Napoleon Gackle Street are 42 to nothing. Windmere Lidgerwood, 47 to 20 over Maple River. West Hope Newburgh Glenburn, 62 to 14 over Divide County. North Prairie, 42 over my beloved St. John Woodchucks, 42 to nothing. The Cougars That's over the Woodchucks. Night. Just not in the cards for the Woodchucks. And the whole scenes from New Salem, Almont, 44 to 6 over the Beach Buccaneers. And with that, we saw a lot of scores. Let's see some highlights. Let's head up on north to Jody Norstead and West Fargo. A lot of high scoring action tonight, Jody. Yeah, a lot of lopsided affairs. You mentioned the Shanley score got out of hand. Bismarck got a big win. It didn't win at all last year. And uh, congrats to the Demons uh, for getting the W tonight. And how about those horse hawks? Got highlights of them coming up here in a little bit. Then Old Helmet, and it's a brand new school, but they switched their, their helmet design. And then uh, South Border just sending their helmet in in time to get it on tonight, and we'll have highlights of their big win over Grant County Flasher in a bit. But let's start with Shanley against West Fargo. The Deacons ranked number one in the state, the defending state champs. Going to West Fargo, and boy, tough one for the pack. Keaton McGregor coming off that record-setting performance last week against Century, but he tweaked something in warm-ups left after just a few plays and they missed him. Brady Medina on the slant, but he hits the wrong team. Jordan Leininger with a pick six. It's 14 zip early. Deacons driving again. They get into the red zone. Caden Christman though blown up on the one and he fumbles. Packers recover for the turnover. One play later, West Fargo standing in its own end zone and they forget to block the defensive tackles. Shanley's D-line eats him up for the safety. 16-0 Deacons. Punt, Shanley ball, and the onslaught continues. Landon Meyer fires to Sam Oshek, and he speeds toward the pylon to make it 23 zip. Meyer, well, he has more options than a McDonald's menu. He hits Jordan Leininger over the middle. That's six more, and it's 29-0 early in the second. The offense runs like fast food, too. I'm not sure they use more than 10 seconds on the play clock the entire first half. Oshek stretches his way in. It's 36-0 before you could blink. West Fargo breaks up the shutout on the next drive. Brady Medina targets the big tight end, Tony Leal. Check out this juggling catch. As he's being interfered with, by the way, highlight reel touchdown gets the pack on the board, but it was Deacon domination. Meyer drops this one in a bucket to Jake Kraft. It's gonna be a 40-yard score. Boy, Shanley runs away with the, this one. Up 50 to six at halftime, and the top-ranked Deacons roll to the 57 to 14 win. Right now, I'm telling you, Deacons, if they continue to play like that, they look unstoppable. They will play Fargo South, South coming up from that two-way spot to play the Deacons coming up next week. And uh, West Fargo and Legacy will have that one on Midco Sports. A season ago, Davies opened a lot of eyes when the Eagles dismantled Cheyenne, snapping the Mustangs' 20-game regular season win streak. Good start here. They forced a turnover, much like they were doing all last week. 
They were getting sacks and all sorts of stuff last week. And Zach Lilly is going to capitalize on it. Plenty of daylight, 70 yards. See you later. Lilly pad to the end zone. Davies grabs an early 7-0 lead. Mustangs trying to respond. They get a big play of their own. Caleb Deer floats this one down the sidelines. No Olsen had a touchdown catch last week. Gets another here. We're tied up at sevens at Mustang Stadium. Cheyenne puts up 41 points in last week's open over Legacy tonight. Much tougher contest. They had to grind this one out. They beat Davies 21 to 14. That loss will prove to probably be pretty costly for Davies when it comes down the stretch. Well, last year, Mandan snapped an eight-game losing streak to the Patriots. Braves struggled to score last week at Davies. Century scored 46 last week, a total they didn't reach until game five last year. Ole Taylor here getting the big sack on Hudson Sheldon. Braves pinned back, and Tristan Ulmer are going to have to eat this one on the punt attempt. Gives the Patriots a couple of points. Next possession for Mandan. Sheldon rolls near side. This is Hudson Sheldon. Finds Mr. Ulmer. Boy. Maybe some Elmer's glue on his gloves. Makes the catch, 60 yards for the score. Braves take an 8-2 lead after the two-pointer. Second quarter, Mandam punting from their own end zone. Elmer in trouble again. This time he escapes. Still ends up a turnover on down, so the Patriots get the ball at the seven. Michael Twardowski, fresh off that four-touchdown performance a week ago, and we have a 9-8 game. That doesn't happen often. Things like this don't happen often either. Low snap, Sheldon gathers, throws an absolute dart to Trinity Anderson. Nice toe tapper. Touchdown on the Braves, retake the lead. Mandan wins a nail biter tonight, 26 to 23. So that score, Davies Cheyenne, all really close games. Century gets Cheyenne next week. Well, I've been bullish on Minot this year, ranking them third in the state in the preseason. They took it to St. Mary's in the opener, hosting Legacy tonight in the Magic City, and they did it again. Magi received the opening kickoff. Lucas Peter, first year it's his starting QB. And all you got to do is hand it out for this guy. Tyson Ruziska, 50 yards to the end zone. Minot leads it 7-0, less than a minute into the game. Sabres get their first try on offense. Probably crowd there, too. Not much time to think about it, though. Griffin, Broderick, and DJ Jones with the combo sack. Legacy forced to punt. Magi race down the field again. Broderick takes the pitch out of the backfield. Look out, defender. Boom! Runs over a guy at the goal line. Minot up 14-0. Savers ball now, and we got some videographer problems here. Down in front here, coach. The pass going to be tipped right into the waiting arms of Talon Junt. Minot takes over on the 30-yard line. Home team capitalizes, too. How about that? A nice balloon up in the air. Uh, Iron Mike Tyson Ruziska. That's what I was going to call him. I had written it down and everything. So creative. Makes it 28-0 going into the second. The aerial assault working to beater to my preseason player of the year in AAA. Logan Conklin. Can't leave him wide open. The hot air balloon. Well, it just continues to rise for Minot. They win it 49-0 tonight. The Magicians absolutely blowing out everyone so far. They get a big one against Mandan next week. Minot off to its first 2-0 start since 2015. Let's go to two-way. Third-ranked South taking on Central in game one of a doubleheader at Cushman. Tough news for the Bruins earlier this week, losing All-State defensive end Cole Pegba to a season-ending ACL injury. First quarter, though, South took possession with great field position in Demarion Semenko. Get used to hearing his name in the highlights. 7-0 Bruins. We go all the way to the third. It was 7-0 at half. Both teams struggling to move the ball, but South's Dwayne Mitchell catches a pass, makes a couple of nice moves, and speeds down the sideline for a nice game for the visitors. A few plays later, here comes that Semenko guy again. Watch this run. Get some good blocking. Dorian Sadness out there in front. He's coming off his own injury from last year, and Semenko into the end zone. 13 zip ruins after the block point after. South's next possession once again started in pretty good field position. They take advantage again. Semenko this time showing off his speed. He blazes into the end zone. His third touchdown of the evening. That's a hat trick up in Grand Forks. 20 to 0 Bruins. Fourth quarter. Semenko not done yet. Man, kid had to be tired, but he showed you the speed. He showed you the zigzag there. He shows you the power flattening a couple of guys at the goal line. Big night for him. His fourth touchdown, 27-0. Later in the fourth now, how about a little air? This time, quarterback Brevin Wark hits George Hannesgard over the middle for the touchdown. 34-0 Bruins as they roll to their second victory of the season. Big win for Fargo South. 
We just needed to get things going. I mean, we weren't executing on everything, so I mean, that was the main point in halftime. And then coming out, that was just our main focus to, you know, turn everything around, forget about everything that happened in the first half, and then, you know, just come out and start executing on things. Well, they certainly did that. Red River coming off that impressive win over the two-time defending state champs from Jamestown, taking on Wapaton, a team that beat twice last year, including the state quarterfinals. Trade Mauk, though, has been electric so far this year. He goes 50 yards to the house. Mauk, remember, had 140 yards rushing, 66 yards receiving last week, and four touchdowns, plus a pick six. He's even doing more. But this was last week's game ball winner, Pierce Parks. He's into the end zone. Makes it 7-6 Red River after the extra point. Fast forward to midway through the second quarter. Riders up 10-6 after a field goal, but Bjorn Kuvala finds Mauk on a 40-yard bomb. The guy can do everything. Mauk would run it in a couple plays later to make it 12-10 Wapaton. Wapaton looking to score again before the half. Kubla thrown to the end zone, but this one's going to be intercepted. Carter Flom right over his shoulders. Keeps the lead at two going into the break for Wapaton. Remember, Huskies up two at the half. Rough Riders have to dig out of a little bit of a hole. Reed Crowstead helping that case. Plunges into the end zone, makes it 16-12 Riders. Then midway through the fourth, Red River getting it done on the ground again. They have one of the best offensive lines in the state. And Tommy Kraft sprints, flashes to the end zone, makes a couple of guys miss, 32 yards. And Red River has a two-score lead of 23-12. Wapaton threatened late, but this one is over. Tommy Kraft had a breakup late. Red River wins it 23 to 12. It wasn't pretty, but Kraft and the Riders moved to 3 and 0 on the season. We had a goal going into this. Uh, we we needed to win. We made mistakes in this, the first half, but I'd say for sure we won the second half. Thank for my brothers behind me. They believed in me. At halftime, we had to pick each other up. We were feeling down, but play after play, we just keep getting at each other's back. We made some mistakes, but we found a way to come out with the win. West Fargo Horace still seeking that first win in program history. Would tonight be the night? Hawks hosting Devils Lake. First quarter, Horace drives right down the field, and it's Dylan Johnson from 14 yards out. Here in a couple of red and white guys into the end zone. Makes it 7-0. First drive for the Firebirds. Well, it doesn't last long. Mason Palmer escapes the pocket, gets it to Wiley DeLorme, who takes it 56 yards, running like a literal bird on fire. We're tied at sevens. Next horse drive, Taylor Stefanovic airs one deep to Israel. Oh, Israel Bauer hauls it in, almost scores. Then on the next play, Johnson going to punch it in from the one-yard line and give the Hawks a 14-7 lead. Head coach Harvey McMahon loving that. To the second quarter we go. The Hawks getting tricky. Runner reverse to Gavin Olson. Gavin navigating traffic, and he's heading to the house. 50 yards extends the lead to 13. Horse up 20-7 at that point, and the Hawks. They stopped a potential go-ahead two-point conversion by Devils Lake with 44 seconds left. And your Horace Hawks win it tonight, 27-26. Second year of the program, their first victory as a varsity squad. Congrats to those Horace Hawks celebrating tonight. Let's go down to Class A. Velva has picked up right where it left off last season. Defending champs dominant in their first two games, visiting Delax Burlington tonight. A is going to work early. Ben Shep connects with Trayson Iglehart for a quick six points. You are working pretty fast, and that's the way the Aggies like to operate. Already up 8-0, driving again. DLB's defense fooled here. Iglehart scores again. They missed the two-pointer, but they go up 14-0. Pivotal moment in the half. Belva hands it off, but the ball is on the ground here. Lakers recover the fumble, and suddenly they're in position. A few plays later, Paxson Eastis. He is an excellent playmaker, one of the best athletes in the state. Connects with fellow senior Braylon Fisher, who gets into the end zone. They convert the two, and hey, we got a game, right? Well, here's a wild one. Ben Shep under pressure in Laker territory. They're getting after him, but, well, Houdini knows how to pull out a few rabbits. That one completed to Reg Reggie Bruner, and the defending champs still looking strong. They get the sack here do the Lakers but the defending champs are going to come out with a win on the road 40 to 16 Aggies still looking like the team to beat in class A let's go to nine man ball a budding rivalry in nine man is Grant County Flasher and fifth ranked South Border Clash for the fifth time in three years they split meetings in each of the last two seasons with the storm winning both playoff games 
All defense early, Storm's big man Weston Zacker with a big TFL. Couple plays later on fourth and short. Defense again, pass across the middle. Brody Freilich gets the interception and a nice return to boot for the Storm. But that good defensive start, the same for both sides. Javin Freeze coming off that record tying five rushing touchdown performance a week ago. Not on this play, Luke Piat says, you ain't going anywhere. Big stop there in South Border behind that good defense early. Wins it 37 to 14. The Mustangs move to 3 and 0 and exercise some demons against Grant County Flasher, who's gotten them the last two years in the playoffs. We'll see if that happens again. Linton, HMB, Strasburg, Zeeland adjusting to nine man pretty well so far. 2 and 0 with some great playmakers taking on Napoleon Gackle Streeter and standout senior Trevor Moose. Jordan Jangula is going to be looking for Moose downfield here early, but overthrows him a bit. Jace Jokum picks it off and Jace is ready to race. He's like Chase on the case. Makes a few moves and turns on the burners. Running like a lion chasing an antelope. I'm pulling out Lion King references, Paw Patrol. He goes 85 yards for the pick six. You got to think of a lot of ideas when a guy has a long return like that. Moments later, Gentry Richter to Jacob Vandervorst. Double V breaking some knees, scooting up the sidelines for the 35-yard score. Linton up 12-0. Then it's Richter looking for Cashton Moser and well, Cashton looking around, looking for someone to stiff arm. He slowed down to stiff arm a guy. That's how you know you're really tough. Linton up 18 zip. Curtis Walls excited about his team's play. And Richter going to dial up another Larry Umber. Boy, the Lions just laying the lumber tonight. Up 26 rip. They go on to win big tonight. 42-0. The offense looking like a loaded bunch for this Lions team. And Jace Jokum, certainly one of those playmakers. Let's hear from him. We're communicating really well, we're talking, we're having fun with each other, we're just playing football. We have athletes all over the field, we have a quarterback who can make plays, we get the ball in our receiver's hands, we just make plays. Lines with another good test against Grant County Flasher next week. Good to get down to Warbird country tonight. Winemere Lidgerwood hosting Maple River. Warbird's trying to stack wins knowing a matchup with Sargent County looms in a few weeks. Pick it up in the second. Tied at six. Carter Bosch, he's been really good for Maple River this early in the season. 30 yards, he's into the end zone. 12-6 Maple River. Next possession, Tyler Grant keeps it at the one. Ties things back up after both teams missed the PATs. 12-12. Still in the second, T. Silling, another one of those playmaking weapons for Maple River, runs it on the option, pitches to Bosch, who scampers up the sideline, 65 yards to the house. This kid is a world-class sprinter, okay, a state-class sprinter at this point, but he is super fast. Maple River up 20 to 12, but now 30 seconds left in the half. Brand throwing a beautiful ball to Levi Kackman, who scores with 16 seconds left in the half, and that Ended up propelling Weinmere a little bit. They trailed 20 to 18 at the break, but the Warbirds with a 47 to 20 win up to 3 and 0. They play at Hankinson next week. So plenty of interesting things happening across the state. Shout out to Langdon Edmore Munich. That is a huge win that they got tonight over Botno. And how about those Horse Hawks uh, getting that big victory uh, for their first as a program, guys? All right, thank you, Jody. Coming up next, we'll talk about a little zone coverage. Biggest stories in North and South Dakota when we return. Varsity Sports Live, presented by Farmers Union Insurance. Simply different. Welcome back here on Varsity Sports Live. Lots of... Uh, Lobsided games and lots of close games. We have some reaction from some of those lobsided wins, but the Fargo South game against Central, this is a, a completely different Central team than maybe the last couple of years. Jake Showers really getting things turned around. It was a 7-0 South lead at the half, and then they really adjusted some things, turned up the notch. Demarion Semenko was running wild, had four rushing touchdowns tonight, so shout out to him. Obviously a, a guy that will be on the game ball top performers list uh, this week as a contender there. Uh, but Tyler Kozel, the head coach, I mean, they go on to win this thing 34-0, up to 2-0. They're ranked third in the latest uh, Class AA poll. Uh, this Bruins team starting to look pretty good and starting to prove some things out there. We didn't start as well as we'd like to. I mean, 4 o'clock, a little different. We had to do things a lot differently as a team. Um, but our guys settled in the second half, played well with that. But I wish we would have started a little bit quicker. But we're just happy to get out here with a win. 
Oh, it's big. I mean, we talk about going 1-0 one, one each week. We accomplished our goal. We got to move on, enjoy this one for the time being. But we got a very good team coming into Fargo South next week with Fargo Shanley. So uh, that's we'll enjoy this now, but switch our focus. Well, Tyler makes that point about the slow start. Obviously, a 4 o'clock game, just a little bit different. But you cannot afford a slow start next week. As you mentioned, very good Shanley team coming in that just put up 56 points tonight on West Fargo. And I'm telling you, they barely waste any time off the play clock. It is boom, boom, boom. Uh, this Deacons team is humming along right now. And that is the matchup we have to look forward to next week. A couple of undefeated teams. Troy Mattern going back to the school that he has led to state championships before at Fargo South. And uh, the guy that replaced him, Tyler Kozel, leading that Bruins squad. So that should be an interesting matchup. Down in the nine-man ranks, Linton HMB, one of those teams dropping from Class A down to nine-man. The last time they were in nine-man, they were hoisting the hardware as state champs inside the Fargo Dome. And now they're back in that division, feeling pretty confident. They have a lot of playmakers on offense. But for me right now, it's the defense. A shutout tonight against Napoleon Gackle Street or a team with a lot of playmakers. In week one, they allowed 12 points. Week two, they allowed six points. Tonight, a shutout. They just keep getting better and better and better on that side of the ball. Curtis Walls, the head coach of the Lions, weighs in. And those guys are playing together. They're hustling around. We have a good mixture of size and speed. And uh, watching our defense play sound defense is, is just awesome to see. Um, we take pride in it. Uh, we know that, you know, of course we want to score points, but we know the least, uh, the less we let them score, then the better chances that we have. So it's uh, matching up our players as well as we can and uh, just being aggressive and physical. So congrats to those Lions and another tough one against the Grant County Flasher team that has had plenty of success over the last few years. Uh, that should be a fun one coming up next week. But uh, guys, it, Entertaining night, and next week we get back to being a live game here in North Dakota, West Fargo, hosting Bismarck Legacy, a legacy team that's hungry for a win in West Fargo. You know they're going to want uh, to get back on track here. A great outing last week. It didn't result in a win against Century, uh, and now staring at an 0-2 record, Legacy 0-2. Someone's going to get that first win, we're going to have it for you live on Midco Sports next week. A couple of hungry teams should be a fun one. Thank you so much, Jody. You bet. Absolutely. So we had zone coverage up in North Dakota. Let's talk about here in South Dakota up uh, here. Two back to back shutouts to start the season. 32 nothing over to Aberdeen Central. 49 nothing tonight over Brookings. Yeah, and we had a camera out there and Steve Steele, who's won six in a row and tries to keep it as low key as possible, talked with us after the game. We just knew we had to come out and execute and, um, you know, be a week better. I uh, thought we were not quite as sharp as we wanted to last week offensively and especially on special teams. Uh, and, you know, this was a full phase win. We had a great special teams effort tonight. Um, offense looked a week better and, and defense was stout again. So really, really fun game. This group, they, they're really self-driven. This is a fun group of kids. Um, they, they expect to be great. Um, they want to be great and they work hard to be great. So, I mean, it's just been a lot of fun to coach these kids and, and just to see the desire more than anything else. I suppose when you're two and zero, you have to find some yeah. li some little things to nitpick. But he, but he, as he said, it's it's a very fun group to coach. Th that's what I wanted to talk about. Is you know this group has learned how to win, obviously through their senior. Year, and he talks about these seniors being more prepared than any class of seniors he's ever had. So yeah, they're in good shape. 81 nothing through two games. Pierre was 2 and 0 and looking every bit, as I said, like the six time defending state champions. Uh, the other big game tonight in the lower 11 man ranks. How about Sioux Valley over Elk Point Jefferson? We had discussed it during the break. This is a Sioux Valley team that lost to EPJ 50 to nothing last season, and they come back and they beat him tonight 20 to 11. Well, that one really hurt them last year. Of all the losses Sioux Valley had, that one was the one that the players talked to me about over uh, the offseason. They were really glad to get this monkey off their back, and head coach Dan Hughes led the Cossacks to a big win tonight. Elk Point's got a great team. They're very well coached. Tip of the cap to Jake Terry and Jake Otkin. They're great coaches, and uh, they have a good team. And, and uh, you know, we came out on top on this one. So I'd say it probably helped our momentum. You know, we're, we're focused on just improving day by day. So, uh, you know, we'll, learn, we'll watch the film. We'll learn from it. We'll keep improving. So. And steady improvement. You've seen it over the course of the first couple games already. Yeah, in 268 yards rushing tonight against a really good team. That's promising. And then uh, 148 of those yards to Bowden Schiller. Big night for him. They didn't even have to use Donovan Rose that much. Huge win for these Cossacks as they move forward. 20 to 11 over Elk Point Jefferson. When we come back, we'll wrap it all up. Put a bow on this Friday. Preview a couple games on Saturday when we return to Varsity Sports Live.
Varsity Sports Live, presented by South Dakota State University. Build a better future with South Dakota State University. Welcome back. We had a great Friday night of high school action. Rushmore Bowl on Saturday. Sioux Falls Lincoln against Rapid City Central. Douglas against Rapid City Stevens. Starts at 4 o'clock Central, 3 o'clock Mountain Time. For Jody, for Jandy, I'm Brownie. Later.